Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 17.7 released to the public the other day and iOS 17.7 released alongside iOS 18 is sort of an alternative. This was a little bit different this time around because if you have an iOS 17 supported device, iOS 18 is also supported on all of the same devices. However, when you went to install it, you had two options. Now you had iOS 17.7, or you could upgrade to iOS 18 by pressing the button at the bottom. Many people have asked, should I stay on iOS 17.7 or what's actually new with iOS 17.7? So I thought I'd cover this as many people have asked. Now this update came in at 1.38 gigabytes on my iPhone 15 and on the iPhone 12 pro max here, which I installed it here as well. It came in at a smaller 682.5 megabytes. So it wasn't a huge install. It depends what version you were actually installing it from. Now this released alongside iOS 18, as I mentioned before, and also many other updates that Apple released to the public for the first time the other day with iPad OS 18, TV OS 18, and many more. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go into settings, then general, then about. As you can see, the build number is 21H16, and you'll see it says this update provides important security fixes and is recommended for all users. Now there is no modem update in this particular update, and there's no new features in this update. This is just a security update, and they don't even mention that it actually has bug fixes in the actual notes here. So this is really just a security update to bring you up to the date with the security of iOS 18 and sort of allow you to use your older device or current device with the previous version. If you don't want to upgrade just yet to iOS 18, maybe you have some apps you're worried about or compatibility. That's why you would stay on this. And if we go to Safari, you can see Apple's security release website with all of the latest releases with iOS 18. But if we keep scrolling down, you'll see iOS 17.7 and iPad OS 17.7. If we go into this, we can see the latest security updates with accessibility, compression, game center, image IO, IO surface accelerator, kernel, sort of the underlying code of the OS, as well as mail accounts, MDNS responder, Safari private browser, shortcuts, sync services, transparency, and UI kit. And if you wanted to read one of these to see what they fix, they're usually not that informative, but basically with accessibility, it says the impact, which is the issue an attacker with physical access to a locked device may be able to control nearby devices via accessibility features to fix this. The issue was addressed through improved state management. And then you have the person with the CVE number next to it that actually submitted the issue. So those are all of the issues in iOS 17.7 and why Apple released it. There were no other release notes, but there are other release updates right now. As of today, this is actually Wednesday, September 18th. So it's been a couple days since this released. Apple actually pulled the M4 iPad OS 18 update. It was breaking some iPads. I haven't heard of a single complaint of it, but some people were having that issue. Also, Apple updated the firmware of AirPods Pro 2 again. So this is something that was unexpected as they updated this just the other day. And if we scroll down, they haven't given any new information about it. And you'll see the latest version listed here is 7A294. However, if we go into our settings, go back to where they're connected and within the settings here, if we scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see we're actually on version 7A302. So we have a newer version than what's listed on their website. So this could be for maybe some features coming very soon with the hearing aid detection, but I don't see that in iOS 18 yet, as well as the iOS 18.1 beta four update that came out the other day. There's also one other thing worth mentioning that has to do with iOS 18. So if you have iOS 18, there's an odd bug that could cause messages to crash over and over. Basically this would occur if someone messages you and sends you a watch face and then you reply to that thread. So if someone actually messages you a watch face they're using, and then you go to reply to it, it could cause messaging to crash over and over. And so that leads me to the next version of updates. I would expect Apple to release iOS 18.0.1 very soon to maybe fix some of those issues and maybe even other incremental updates. Last year, we actually had iOS 17.0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and also then 0.1. So we could have quite a few updates and they release them pretty quickly back to back within one week of another or so. So we could see that any day with iOS 18, we could see iOS 18.1 beta five as soon as next week with a public release of iOS 18.1, probably sometime in mid October. 
Of course, we have the iPhone 16 launch with the Apple Watch and AirPods on the 20th, this coming Friday, and we could even see an iOS 17.7.1 if Apple has more security updates they need to update. But overall, that's all this particular update is. It's security updates for your phone. When it comes to performance, I did ask some people that have been using it full time when it was in the release candidate, which is the same version. And they actually said the performance is quite good, whether it's just scrolling, this phone doesn't have pro motion, or if we go over to the 12 pro max, that's been updated as well. It seems to be plenty fast. If we just scroll, things are nice and smooth. If you go into maybe music, go into the first time here give this a second to load, just going into a phone that's already been in here seems to be plenty fast on older devices. Now that doesn't necessarily mean on iPhone 10 R, but it does mean on phones such as the 12 pro max. So it of course could vary depending on which device you have, but in general, it seems to be pretty good. Heat so far is very manageable. The phone is not overly warm. It's a little bit warm just from updating. And as far as the battery goes, well, battery actually has been pretty good. According to some people that have been using it full time, iOS 17.6.1 was an issue for some people, but most people said it was pretty good. This seems to be a little bit better. If we go into the battery settings here and go into battery health on the iPhone 15, you'll see it's only been cycled once. It's basically a new phone. I installed 17.7 just to check it out on this device. On the other device, on the 12 Pro Max that I have here, we're down to 86% with 381 cycles, according to Coconut Battery on the Mac. So in general, this one's doing pretty good, actually, for the amount of cycles it had, since 500 should get you down to about 80% or so on the older batteries. Battery life, according to those that have used it for a little while, seems to get them through the day, no problem, and it seems to be fairly stable. Of course, it will take more time to know for sure, but in general, it seems to be a decent update. So if you're wondering if you should install iOS 17.7, well, if you're on an iOS 17 update, I would definitely do it for the security updates. Everything else seems to be pretty stable and mostly the same, and you may get some improvements here and there as well. You also could try out iOS 18 if you want to, and thankfully you can still downgrade to iOS 17.7, but you would need a computer to do that. But iOS 18 is turning out to be a pretty decent update, but being early on, with millions of users upgrading to it, we're bound to find some additional issues with it. Now, as far as benchmarks, let's take a look at that. When it comes to benchmarks, well, we scored pretty good on the iPhone 15, 2,647 for single core, 6,658 for multi-core. On the iPhone 12 Pro Max, 2,196 for single core and 4,960 for multi-core. This did process quite a bit in the background and I ran it three times and it actually improved significantly every time. So it looks like it's finishing things, could even go a little bit higher and this isn't even the latest processor. So overall, I think they're doing quite well. Let me know if you've found anything different or new in iOS 17.7 that I haven't mentioned in the video. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description. Like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.